Ari Hargula, thank you for taking part in this interview, part of the archive that the Society is putting together. Interviews with pioneers like yourself are an essential part of that archive. Tell me about the early years. What took you into medicine? Where did it all start? The whole my career as a doctor, I have been involved with heart and lung transplantation. And I remember when I finished my med school and then started my specialization to cardiothoracic and vascular surgery at that time in Helsinki. And uh, my, my boss at that time, he spent his uh, Graham Fellowship year at Stanford, 72, so early. At that time, and Philip Capes developed this biopsy and, and these old important techniques, what we have today in use, even, even today, in, in a tra heart and lung transplantation. And he was, when he came back to Finland, uh, at that time they were doing, of course, experimental works there. But, uh, but then he continued that work in, in Helsinki. And when I joined his group, we did already late 70s these experiments with dogs and pigs and, and many other small animals. And then we finally started to practice for the clinical transplantation program in Helsinki. And I remember we did uh, 1985, early 85, the first human la heart transplant from brain death donor to, uh, to another brain death donor. And we had no permission to do that. And that was at first the leaders of the hospital, they said nothing, but they had to take this uh, uh, problem again on the table later when we have done our first real patient. And we received some claims about that at that time, but that was it. But it was good exercise good training for the final step to do the first heart transplant in Finland. And we did it in uh, 1985. Take me back to your earliest years. Yeah. You, you are a native of Helsinki? Yes, I, I am native of fin, fin, Finnish. And you had your medical undergraduate training in Helsinki? In Helsinki, yes. Did you always want to be a surgeon? Uh, actually, yes. I was uh, practicing sports medicine. I, I, I was by myself also training uh, Paul Walt and track and fields. And, and then I joined a team, a uh, uh, medical team who took care of Finnish athletes. Uh -huh. And from this team, the leader was a surgeon, uh, Pekka Peltakallio. He was a, a gastrointestinal surgeon. Mm -hmm. And actually, I did start my career there, only a few, few months. And then uh, thoracic surgeons picked up me from right. the other clinic right. To, right. to thoracic. So you then went into cardiac and thoracic, yes. and, as you say, vascular yes. surgery. Uh, and there was already this link with, Stanf with Stanford yeah. through, your, time. Through, your, through your boss going yeah. right back All time. Yeah. To, the, to the early 70s. Yes. And he came back with an interest in transplantation. And yeah. you, were, you were closely involved with that team. All time. Tell us, then the about, tell us then about that first heart transplant in, in Finland. Yeah, at that time, you know, publicity was huge. All journals and newspapers were full of stories. Now they plan, last night, they planned to do a heart transplant. Or they did, doctors at Helsinki University Hospital did the first heart transplant. It was huge, huge publicity also in Finland, like all over the world uh, in those days. Mm -hmm. Many centers started at the same time then, yes. Yes. when we had this cyclosporine to help us. Sure, sure. We surgeons. And you were part of that, of that yeah. team? Yeah. And then you went to Stanford? That's right. 
tell, tell us about you. You applied for the, for the Ewarts, for the, for, for the Graham Traveling Graham. Fellowship. Yes, and normally it means traveling. And that's nice. Many of our colleagues want to have that prize because you really can travel and visit several centers. But even at that time, Dr. Shamway said me, if you really want to have a lot of uh, good things from this fellowship, you should stay here and just visit shortly other centers. And I did it this way. And which years were you in Stanford? 86, 87. And you were there for a year and a half? Yeah. And uh, it was so that when I uh, moved to Stanford from Helsinki, uh, Dr. Actor, Axel Haveri was doing the same work what Dr. Shamwe asked me to do, continue, okay. with heart and lung transplant program. And Dr. John Baldwin was running the program at that time there. Mm -hmm. Who were the other big names you worked with? Uh, Dr. Stuart Jamieson was just leaving from there. And then uh, uh, um, Mac Dr. McGregor was yes. there. And uh, then, of course, Ed Stinson. Sure, sure. For a Phil Oyer. Yes. Craig Miller. And you were, you were in the, on the clinical side, in the laboratory? Both. They, that was the question because uh, it was a sudden move from Axel Haveri back to home. And, and Dr. Shamway said to me, take this job and you are on call all the time for the heart and lung transplantation. I didn't know what does it mean. But then I figured out that uh, it means that when John Baldwin is in town, I have to be there also. I can travel only when he is traveling. Yes. <laughs> and and it, uh, it's pretty tough, tough time sure, sure. when you're on call at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes Dr. Baldwin was knocking on our door, at our door. You are not answering your phone. <laughs> And, and, and then you had 10 minutes time to pick up this instrumentation and be uh, in the Moffat field. Yes, great. And then you came back, you came straight back to Helsinki. Yeah, that's right. Uh, there were good offers because at that time almost all uh, transplant surgeons were trained by Dr. Shamway and they knew what these guys know and yes. can do. Uh, but our children, they wanted to go back to Finland. And then it was pretty difficult decision to do, yes. to do something else. Yes. Yes. And I had also several offers in Scandinavia, of course, uh, to but start you, but this you kind stayed, of But you stayed in, Hel in Helsinki. I stayed in Helsinki. Helsinki and uh, I think afterwards I'm happy with that. Tell us, tell us about how the program developed in Helsinki and how, the, how that fitted into the overall picture of heart and lung transplantation in Scandinavia. Yes, um, pretty much same time uh, heart transplantation was started at, in Gothenburg and in Oslo, maybe a little bit earlier in Oslo and Helsinki, these three centers. But in Finland there was a big, big debate because politicians are making those big decisions. And it was not really easy to get the permission to start this heart transplant program. And there were very, very much debate in, in newspapers also. Politicians are thinking this and, and uh, doctors are saying other things. And it was very close that uh, Finnish and uh, Swedish transplants would, should be done in a single center, mm -hmm. in one center. Mm -hmm. But we were lucky we could stay yes. and keep the program there. And but by the time you came back from Stanford, had those, had those arguments been, been resolved? Uh, or, yeah. or did, no, you, no, did no. you still face difficulties? We did, uh, we did the first heart transplant one year before I went yes. to Stanford. But uh, when I came back from Stanford and I was doing in the lab, uh, 
lot of uh, experiments in a single lung transplantation mm -hmm. with, with monkeys. Yeah. And uh, then I started the lung transplant program in Helsinki. Okay. When, when did that start? It was when I came back in 87. It, was, it did start the same year. That's one of the very earliest lung transplant programs yeah, yeah. anywhere in yeah. the world, I yeah. think. Yeah, that's good. And how has the program developed since, since then? Since then. Uh, of course, when surgeons are starting these kind of programs, and there are not so many other specialists available and interested in this topic, I think the biggest problem in the beginning was that to know enough about immunosuppression and the problems what will uh, be ahead. Yeah. Technique is not a problem. Sure. We had been practicing so much heart and lung transplant uh, technique, so it was not a problem. We, they were, most of them, if they were native and uh, no other previous operatorsic operations, they were easy. Sure, sure. Only bleeding was a problem sometimes. Always a problem. Maybe today. Always a problem. So the team grew, the program grew? Yeah, slowly. In, in lung transplantation, we had only one uh, pulmonologist and, and two or three surgeons doing that work. And as you very well know that if you don't know everything and do everything just properly, the, the patients are not doing well. Yeah. And we had a lot problems with maybe over immunosuppression and infections. And now slowly everything has been solved and, and the team is better educated and, and I think today our results are very top in the world. Absolutely. And how, how big is the team now in Helsinki? Uh, it's about ten. Uh -huh. Ten doctors. Yes. Five, six yes. surgeons and then other specialists. But we have meetings, but much more colleagues That's attending. That's right. And do you interact with the other Scandinavian centres? Yes, you, you a close interaction with there's uh, a, there's a, there's Scandi, there's tra Scandi, Scandi transplant. transplant. Some uh, research is done together. Yeah. And, and but it's good. And also our donor, uh, we uh, we have donors from all of the Scandinavia. So you, you have an allocation system within the, within within the, Scandinavia. the, Scan the yeah, Scandinavian yeah. countries? Yeah, Denmark, uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland. And it works pretty well. And do you have relations with the, with the, old, the old Russian republics, the, the, Bal the, Bal the Baltic states? Not really, very, very little. Some some of our colleagues from uh, St. Petersburg have visited in uh, Helsinki and they said we will start a lung transplant program, but after that, I don't know yeah. if it's Do you going think that's something that's going to happen in the future? You, you know, you're well placed to collaborate with these evolving nascent centers. Yes, uh, uh, we are collaborating with uh, Estonia and, and, and Baltic countries, but Good. Normally, they send us their patients, and, and ah. we operate them in Helsinki. Yes, but, you, but uh, in in Saint Petersburg, we have no close cooperation at the moment. Okay, okay. So, how do you see things evolving in the future in Scandinavia? What are going to be the big challenges in transplantation for Helsinki and the surrounding countries? Yes, uh, I think uh, the problem are the donors. Mm -hmm. Even I remember when we did start our program in Helsinki and we had a lot of publicity. We got a lot of donors some years and numbers went up. But then slowly yes. they went down and at the moment it's very difficult to find more donors. And uh, average we're doing uh, 20, 25 hearts and same amount of lungs sure. a year. And we are doing almost only bilateral lungs. But for a small country, that's a very respectable 
yeah, activity. Yeah, Tell that's, that's what, true. what is the remind me of the population of Finland? Five point five million. That's that's yeah. a lot a lot of activity. Yeah. We hope more. Uh, other developments, ventricular assist devices. Yes, uh, our first uh, device was uh, this from Stanford. Yeah. Uh, and today we are using Berlin Heart still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then hardware, and, and, then, and more then and more, and an expanding program. All time, very fast. I think we have yeah. more than ten patients at the moment in device sure, waiting sure. for heart. Right. That's. Yes. And then, uh, of course, ECMO is numbers are going up. Yeah. Yeah. For many other purposes, not only for heart That's failure right. or lung That's failure. Right. Now, ever since you came back from Stanford, you've had a clinical interest, you've run the program, but you've had a research interest as well. Uh, yes. Tell, tell, tell us some of the highlights that I come have, out of that I research. I have all time been doing both clinical and, and uh, experimental work. And um, in early days, we did more with pigs. First with dogs, then with pigs. And today, we are doing first experiments with rats, and then pigs. And I think many other centers doing the same, if they have the animal laboratory like that. And the high highlights in my research, I think uh, we were the first group uh, finding out that CT can be used for follow-up of lung tra uh, transplants, even in rejection, acute rejection, chronic rejection, and other abnormalities. And it took se several years when it really came routine in clinical work. That was something uh, we did start in the laboratory with pigs, and, and then uh, it came very soon to a clinical practice. Good, good. Then, oh, so many years we did uh, work with chronic rejection, chronic lung rejection. And we developed nice models for that. Uh, using pigs, and as we know, that's a problem. It was there, will always be there, like Dr. Shambay said. Uh, but anyway, it's important topic, and there are so many things uh, what you have to look for. Sure, I think I think you've made some major cont contributions with with those models of. Uh, yeah chronic allograft dis yeah. dis dysfunction. And now last five years, you know, my group have, team has been doing a lot of work with uh, stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells and myoblasts, and, you, and shell sheets. Do you see a big future there? Um, we just are finishing our first clinical double-blinded uh, study where we gave to these patients injecting stem cells uh, at the time of bypass surgery. And we had control group with the cells, and uh, first we had the group patients with cells, and then we had the patients who received only uh, plasma. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that both groups were doing very well, but <laughs> when first we met these patients, for the angiography and other studies, and then we maximized the medication. More than half of the patient improved so much. Ejection fraction became normal, and we lost them from the study. Sure. But then these two groups, or both of them, improved very significantly, more than 5% ejection fraction one year after mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. I hope we can, in future, use bigger amount of cells and cover the heart with shell sheet, which is very interesting. And I'm sure that uh, many centers will use these stem cells uh, when they put their patients to, into the devices. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's an uh, exciting, a very exciting yeah. prospect. Professor Sava has been done that already in, in uh, Osaka University. Mm -hmm. And he's a pioneer in that area. And at the moment we, had, we have a very close cooperation with 
Savas group and Axel Haberis group in Hannover in this area. These international collaborations you find valuable, obviously. Oh, I can't imagine that we could do this without. Yeah. We need centers. First, I was doing a lot of cooperation with Stanford, and now more with these yeah. other centers. Okay, so you've, you've been involved in thoracic transplantation now for the best part of 30 years. Yeah. From your early training, you were there for the first heart transplant in Finland, you went to Stanford, and you're continuing to innovate. You're continuing to do new things. Yes. What are the highlights for you over those 30 years? Um, I think uh, when I was at Stanford and I gave a talk at, at the AATS meeting in Chicago next year, and they, CNN interviewed me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's uh, my... Yeah biggest. <laughs> okay. So what advice would you give to a young surgeon now? Would you, would you I advise as somebody who was the age that you were when you first started this yeah, long journey? 30, at the age of 30 yes. or something like that. Yeah. Still this area is very interesting and there are so many interesting things and I don't think that the number of transplants will expand very much. That's, I think we all think it's almost there, but maybe a little bit we can increase the number. But then there are many other technologies which we can combine into the transplant programs. And that makes it interesting. And I think I'm sure that next 40 years will bring again something new, interesting in this field too. Ari, thank you very much for sharing your experiences with us. It's thank been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you.